Hey guys, what's up? It's M. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. So, um, let's address the elephant in the room. I did my makeup pretty intensely today. I was trying to go for that like AVG vibe. I don't know how it turned out, but I actually kind of like it. So, I kept it on for the video. So, today I actually have a sort of spicy spilling that tea. I don't have tea, but I have water. And we're going to be spilling the tea on my stats today. So, two of my friends here on YouTube, Lordrick and Claire, they have college videos on their channels. They have some really, really comprehensive videos. They are both such well-spoken, amazing, talented people. And if you guys are curious, I will definitely link their channels down below so you can check them out. They both applied to different schools than I did. So they might have some insight on the application process for a lot more different schools. Also, I would like to put out the typical disclaimers and that is I definitely do not want this video to make anyone feel negatively about themselves or their own stats and I'm definitely not trying to brag or you know flex and another thing I really wanted to mention was that I originally felt very hesitant about putting out my stats because not because I was embarrassed by them or I just didn't want people to know but honestly I really do not want to fuel this ongoing obsession that I think our generation currently has with stats so like comparing scores comparing GPAs getting into colleges with super low acceptance rates and I really just want to emphasize that, especially because with college admissions getting more and more competitive year by year, it's really easy to fall into a trap of being like, oh, I need to have amazing, amazing scores. My stats need to be like stellar, but I think there's so much more to stats in your application process, such as your essays, being cognizant of programs that you are interested in, professors, and just so many other factors play into that. That being said, for today's video, I'm actually partnering with Checklist Program. Checklist Program is an online college prep program filled with resources focused on helping students make more informed decisions during their application process. So when you sign up for Checklist Program, you'll receive weekly emails filled with informative articles, reminders to start working on application materials, and even tools to help you figure out how to maximize your application. There are also monthly calls so that you can get live mentorship, and their team is filled with students from top universities, including MIT, Yale, UT Austin, UC Berkeley, Princeton, Stanford, and Harvard. From my communications with the team, I can totally tell that they are all incredibly dedicated to helping students reach their higher education goals. So if this sounds like something you would be interested in, the team over at Checklist Program sent me a referral link where you can get a year-long subscription for only $10 a month. And I completely understand that financial instability has been especially prevalent during the pandemic. However, if you want to check out checklist program but cannot afford it email the team and they will set you up for free so again thank you so much to the team over at checklist program for reaching out to me and i am so incredibly thankful to be working with a program whose core values really align with mine so without further ado let's get started with today's video my gpa when i applied for college was a 4.36 weighted and a 4.0 unweighted. So the reason why I specified when I applied for college is because my GPA has changed since then because my dual enrollment grades went in. I got a B my first semester of dual enrollment. Next, I'm going to do PSAT before I do the SAT because A, the PSAT comes first chronologically, at least for me it did, and also the SAT is like the big granddaddy of standardized testing, so we're gonna save that for later. <laughs> so I took the PSAT four times total. I started in eighth grade 
And in eighth grade, I got a 1370. In ninth grade, I got a 1460. In 10th grade, I actually dropped um, by 50 points. So I got a 1410. That was definitely really tough to see. And in 11th grade, I got a 1490, which did qualify me for um, the National Merit Scholarship qualifying um, the NMSQT, <laughs> the National Merit Scholarship um, search sort of program thing. So next I'm going to be talking about my SAT score. So I only took the SAT one time and that was in October 2018 and I got a 1510. So I got a 790 on math and a 720 on reading and writing. And I thought that was really kind of weird because I don't really consider myself to be a very math oriented person, but you know, things happen, I guess. I was originally sort of upset with this score because I don't know, I just, I think it was mainly the reading and writing section that really made me feel kind of disappointed because again, like I mentioned, I don't really consider myself to be very math oriented and seeing this like weird discrepancy between the scores really kind of like threw me for a loop. I ultimately did not retake the SAT. As I mentioned, I only took it once and I instead decided to take three subject tests. So now I guess we shall segue into subject test scores. So my first round of subject tests was in June of 2019 and I got a 750 on US history and a 700 on literature. So I honestly was not really surprised by the 700 in literature because honestly during the test I was just so confused. Like I really did not understand very many of the passages I was reading. Like honestly I like thought I was reading gibberish and it was kind of crazy. So I went back a few months later in August to retake literature and take math two for the first time and I was super duper nervous this round because it would be the last time I'd be able to take subject tests before I started sending out my college applications to the schools I was applying to earlier, so like early action and early decision schools. This time I was super duper pumped because I was able to improve my literature score by 600. I mean, not 600, wow. That would be pretty intense. I improved my literature score by 60 points, so I got a 760. And on math two, I got an 800, which was kind of insane, not gonna lie. I was actually really quite proud. It was definitely some, something that I was not expecting. Yeah, it was just really amazing to see that my hard work had paid off, but yeah. And next I'm going to be running through my extracurriculars. So my extracurriculars can really be broken down into four main categories. And so in no particular order, there were art, tennis, community service clubs, and band. So, and I'll just go through those in that order. So I did submit a portfolio to colleges because or most of the colleges I applied to, I didn't submit it for all of them. Um, because for the majority of the schools that I applied to, I did apply to an art program. However, I did apply as a public policy major to the University of Chicago, and I applied as an economics major to UMich because I really wanted to apply for their school of public policy my sophomore year if I had attended there. But I did apply to quite a few art schools as well. I will touch on that later. So I did have a portfolio and I did work at a studio, an outside studio. So I did participate in the Scholastic Art Writing Awards twice, once in 2018 and in 2019. And in 2018, I got an honorable mention in painting. And then in 2019, I got a gold key in drawing and illustration. So all of these were at the state level. Yeah, I'm not cool enough to get national. Tennis, my babe. Okay, so in terms of tennis, 
I did play for quite a long time. I started in middle school and in eighth grade, I tried out for my high school's JV team and in our school system, you're allowed to play on the high school team as an eighth grader and I got in, yay. And so I played singles on JV freshman year and eighth grade and then sophomore year, I did make the varsity team and I have continued to play on there until my senior year and unfortunately our season was cut short by Corona, but what happens happens. I also primarily played singles on varsity tennis. That was really fun. I love my tennis babes. They're the best. I was a junior coach at the tennis center that I play at and that was a really great work experience that I was able to talk about on my comment app. Obviously, I did not literally sign up to be a coach just so I could talk about it on my Common app. And I was also a like private coach for like some of my parents' friends' kids, which was also a really great time. All right, so next is community service clubs. So I participated in three, oh, three <laughs> community service clubs, and those were Beta Club, Interact, and NHS. So I was a general member in both Beta Club and interact however i was a general member at first in nhs however my junior year my friend and i claire actually who i talked about earlier in this video she and i were elected co-secretary our junior year and we have been co-secretaries and that was really a great experience so yeah i think one of the biggest things i do want to like quickly just briefly talk about that's not really exclusive to my stats but i think it's really really important to choose extracurriculars that you're genuinely interested in. I think it's so important to make the most use of the limited time that you have. Having a deep emotional connection with whatever you're doing will really shine through on your application and that's like the most important thing to keep in mind. Hey guys, it's editing. I'm here and at this point I started getting super duper rambly so I wanted to pop in and just summarize what I was saying. So basically what I was talking about at this point was taking a formulaic approach to choosing your extracurricular activities definitely does more harm than good because you're really focusing on what other people say will bring you success rather than really prioritizing your own interests and your own happiness. So next is band and I started band when I was in sixth grade. I've been playing clarinet for six years. Wait, is that right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, that's six. I don't really consider myself to be a very math-oriented person. And I really did enjoy playing clarinet. I was principal clarinet for five out of the six years. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed playing the clarinet. I didn't really take any outside lessons. So yeah, band was definitely a huge part of my life. So the gist of what I was trying to say here was that band was definitely more of a casual activity for me. It was more similar to a hobby than maybe in extracurricular. But I think that having these hobbies, so things that really lack the stress and pressure of a typical extracurricular is so important still, even though it may not really seem the most impressive on a college application because these sort of fun activities are what really replenishes your soul when you're feeling burnt out from school and all of these other commitments that you have and i think that it's sometimes easy to put these things that you enjoy for fun on the back burner when you are focused on so many other things but I think it's still so important to recognize how valuable these activities are in your life. So I low-key have no clue how I totally forgot to discuss my AP course load when I was originally filming the video. So I wanted to just pop in and talk about those really quickly. So up on the screen, I have this little visual that lays out all of the AP classes that I took and the scores that I got. So I took one AP class my freshman year, two sophomore year, and six my junior year, 
and in my sophomore year, I was awarded the AP Scholar with Honor Award, and my junior year, I was awarded both the AP Scholar with Distinction Award as well as the National AP Scholar Award. You might have noticed that I did not take any AP classes my senior year, and that's because I was dual enrolling at Georgia Tech, and there, my main focus was to fulfill my high school graduation requirements, but also take some classes that weren't offered at my high school. And the reason why there are not that many details on the screen is because I was thinking about doing an in-depth video about my dual enrollment experience. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely let me know because I would love to make that video for you guys. And that concludes today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Your support means the world to me. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because it lets me know the type of content that you guys enjoy watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!